Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. This is going to be a very special uh, video, I should say series of videos. Uh, for the first time I'm going to try to do um, uh, real time, no time lapse, for an entire illustration, all of it recorded uh, in video form. Now, uh, my plan is to break it into four parts, and this is the first part. Part one is going to be the pencils. Now I'm pulling out a ruler here to uh, just give myself a few basic guidelines before I get started. Um, it's going to be an image of a uh, woman on a uh, hillside, uh, probably in Japan, and uh, I'm going to have her standing pretty near the uh, center of the uh, image. Let's say right here is where she's standing. I'm just going to throw a line there. And then I'm going to have a shrine uh, over here, like one of these uh, old Japanese roadside shrines. Uh, anyone who's watched my videos for any length of time will know. <laughs> I have a, a, a sort of affection for these roadside uh, shrines you see in Japan. Not big, not big fancy ones, these little sort of humble ones uh, that I think are very uh, pretty. Anyway, so I'm, I'm putting four lines here that will be sort of the beams that support this shrine. And let's just go ahead and add a line around here that will be the, uh, the roof of that shrine. And... Um, the other thing that's going to be on here is a, a fence of some kind, but maybe I'll hold off and uh, add that in later. That's going to be a sort of um, compositional aspect. But like I said, this whole video, this whole first video is going to be all real time, and uh, I'm going to be showing you um, just the pencils in this process. So I sort of feel like starting uh, over here with this shrine uh, before I go uh, into drawing the... Um, female character. I gotta say that's probably the trickiest part doing uh, drawing the female character. That's the part I'm going to struggle with uh, doing all real time and making sure that um, it looks good and so forth. But I'm trying to uh, do some loose guidelines here for myself for um, deciding where this uh, rooftop comes in. And maybe for now you're not going to see too clearly what it is I'm doing, but hopefully it'll um, make itself clear over time. Uh, but this is sort of the, the front uh, of this structure that's going to come back like so. Uh, I imagine one of these um, corrugated steel uh, roofs, which of course that's not the most scenic <laughs> kind of shrine that you can imagine. Usually you'd see a tile roof or something like that. But uh, anyway, to sort of bring it back more to the uh, illustrator's perspective, notice how loose I'm keeping all these lines. Uh, these are not final lines. This is just sort of figuring out how I want this structure uh, to look. And um, yeah, I'm not trying to achieve perfection. In fact, that'll probably be one of the themes of this series of videos is that uh, one gradually uh, works one's way towards the finished product. And uh, a lot of people actually over the years have commented, or you know, I've seen in the comments section, boy, it looks so terrible at first. Your, your drawing looks bad, like it's going to turn out awful. And then you somehow uh, you know, manage to fix it toward the end and turn it into something that looks good. And um, that is actually, you know, part of the process in a way. Uh, I think that uh, if you know what you're heading toward, you've, toward, if you have some sense of what you're heading toward, um, you understand that these first lines you're putting down are not uh, perfection. They're just sort of getting it started. You're going to build something on top of that. You don't want to achieve... Uh, or even attempt <clears throat> to achieve some kind of perfection uh, at the outset. Now I've got sort of the roof structure here, um, and uh, before I do the bottom of it, in fact, I think I sort of should uh, uh, indicate a little more of this grassy background. You know, I drew this super straight line here. Of course, a grassy hillside is rarely as straight as all that, so I'm uh, uh, kind of roughing it up a little bit here. And uh, I imagine that she's standing on a uh, road, let's say, and so let's go ahead and uh, make some indications of that, coming back like so. This is like a one-point perspective uh, as we're looking at this road heading off here. Like I said, she's going to be standing there. I want it to be a rainy day. This sort of brings together a lot of my uh, favorite little uh, f things that I love in a scene. Um, she'll be holding an umbrella and so forth. So uh, anyway, now that I've sort of got a little better of a sense of what this grass is going to look like, uh, I think I can commit 
a bit more to um, doing the base of this shrine, knowing how it's going to fit into the ground and so forth uh, to be part of this scene. And this, in fact, is a little bit of a two-point perspective, I guess you'd say, but, uh, you know, in, in the past I've done videos where I teach about perspective and I'm using the ruler all the time and, um, sh you know, putting the points on the horizon. This is maybe giving you a more honest look at how sometimes you kind of wing it a little. You're not, I mean, I'm not just, I'm not sitting here saying, okay, well, let's see, this goes to the horizon. I'm just sort of uh, uh, doing my best to, to make it work in a, a rough uh, two-point perspective scheme. Um, and the beams uh, fitting down here. I'm going to get the other side of the shrine. And of course in the back of the shrine I imagine we have some kind of uh, um, stone uh, obelisk, I guess you'd call it, uh, Buddhist shrine, let's say. And then we'll, so we'll, I'll start to indicate this figure back here. Again, in a very loose way. And then there's generally um, in front of such uh, obelisks. Uh, I'm not. I know I'm not using the right word there. <laughs> I never do. It's a great critty tradition. Um, there's generally some like flowers uh, or little offerings. I think I've seen like oranges placed there sometimes when I was over in Japan. Um, and basically, I think we've got the shrine the way I want it to be, at least in a very loose, rough uh, form. So, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on the, we've got, uh, coming up on seven minutes, I want each one of these videos to be about 20 minutes long. I don't want people, um, you know, having to suffer through incredibly long videos. In fact, I'm a little nervous about this one, I'll, just to let you know what I'm doing. I'm going <clears> to <throat> put in some lines here for this fence I was talking about that is going to kind of finish off the composition for me. I see it as one of these rustic, uh, old-fashioned um, wood beam kind of fences that uh, instead of instead of a fancy one, this whole thing is very um, nostalgic and uh, old-fashioned, you know, sort of romanticized vision of a scene. And these are going to be the beams that support uh, the fence. So I'm just sort of throwing in some verticalish lines so as to uh, complete that. Oh, wait a minute. And I haven't, uh, haven't really finished drawing the way this fence will go across, have I? Anyway, as you can hear, I'm sort of stumbling for words here. I'm just not used to doing... Um, a video like this in which you see the entire process. So apologies in advance um, if I if I am not saying brilliant things every minute of every one of these videos. But I thought it was worth trying at least once a a, a real time video like this that shows you the entire process. No time lapse. No trickery. Not that time lapse is really trickery necessary necessarily, but um, it it. For me, it helps me zip through parts that would otherwise maybe be a little boring in terms of what I'm talking about. Uh, but this time, we ain't gonna do that. We are we are committed to showing you warts and all the entire process. And maybe you know the the best thing about this, I'm hoping, is it, it gives you a more honest view of how long it takes uh, to do a decent drawing like this. So now it's time for me to. Uh, move into drawing this uh, female character that is visiting the shrine. And I put in that line there that's going to kind of be um, the line of her spine. And I, I told you my idea was to have her holding an umbrella. So I'm coming in here and uh, doing a rough indication of an, uh, an umbrella that she's holding as she uh, looks at this sh shrine. Maybe it has some special meaning to her. Uh, uh, I sort of like the the idea of a a scene like this that seems to suggest a story without really spelling out what that story is. But I'm going to draw this umbrella first just because I think it has a, a compositional aspect to it. And then I can draw her um, in such a way that she's holding this umbrella. So maybe a little odd. Some people might think, well, why don't you draw her first and then draw the umbrella? But oh, I had a uh, certain idea of the angle of the umbrella, you know, that the, the shrine is going this way and the umbrella is going just a little bit the opposite direction. So I thought I'd get that in there first. And then we'll see if I can um, 
draw her uh, so that she sort of fits the umbrella, if that makes sense. I'm going to get her uh, head back here a little bit. And in fact, maybe I'll uh, redo this whole idea of where she's standing now that I've got that umbrella in place. This again, like I said, warts and all. You're seeing the entire process, uh, how people change their mind about certain things uh, once they've started getting into the drawing. Um, I'm drawing her hand holding the umbrella, and um, I ought to do a video at some point about showing what someone looks like in profile when they're just standing there, um, because that is a challenging thing to do, and that's exactly, uh, unfortunately for me, what I'm trying to do right now, live in this video, is get the proper stance for this female character, who is... Um, sort of visiting this shrine. See if I can get the proportions. I've gone all loose, very rough looking, as I gradually work my way towards uh, something usable. Now I'm going to maybe draw some uh, rain galashes, <laughs> some boots for her. I am not, you know, actually when it comes to drawing figures, my drawings tend to be quite stiff, I must say. It's, it's something I have had to kind of maybe make my peace with about myself, a limitation of mine as an artist. Um, I try uh, as best I can to loosen these things up and have them not um, have the stiffness to them. But, you know, different artists have their different um, flaws, I suppose, along with the different uh, things that they excel in. I suppose with, for my, if I look at my strengths as an artist, um, I feel like I have a, a certain gift for these hyper-detailed scenes, um, maybe for creating a sense of depth, um, other things like that. But when it comes to drawing figures that seem very loose and, uh, you know, um, just have a sort of a casual feel to them, I am not very good at that. My figures always look a little stiff, a little... Um, like they were, uh, like I labored over them to get them to look halfway decent, which is exactly what I had to do. <laughs> and I envy the people who uh, have a natural ability to get figures to look right just the first time. I want to say she's wearing jeans here, folks. All right? This is a long coat, but I have promised that the next time I drew a female character, she would not be wearing a skirt. And I'm going to make good on that promise with this illustration. She is not wearing a skirt. She's wearing blue jeans here, and uh, this is just a long coat. So anyway, um, let's see if I can kind of finish off then some of the other stuff. We've used up 13 minutes now. I did, like I said, want to limit these things to about 20 minutes per video, just to give you a quick preview of, of my planning on this thing. This first video is devoted to uh, pencils. The second video is going to be devoted to uh, putting down a base layer of watercolor. And that one's going to be a little bit of a, um, a tough one for me in the sense that when I am done with that video, it's not going to look that great. Uh, because it is, like I said, just this base layer. Uh, it's going to be this base layer of watercolor. It's gonna, we're going to be about halfway, well, literally halfway through the illustration process. It's going to look kind of crummy, I fear, at the end of that of uh, you know next week's video. Um, but that's just the way it goes. And in the third video, uh, I'm going to pull out colored pencils. I'm going to start to tighten things up. It'll look a little better by the end of the third video. In the fourth video, I'm kind of looking forward to the fourth video is going to be the polishing stage. Everyone knows I love the polishing stage where I put final touches. And we're going to devote, you know, 20, 25 minutes, whatever it takes, in that last video, all real time, uh, showing you how I would uh, polish things up and bring it to completion. Now, if you add it all together, uh, 20 uh, minutes per video, four videos, we're going to end up with an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, to complete an illustration, which is not a lot of time, I gotta tell you, people, hour and hour and twenty minutes is not a lot of time uh, for doing a full color illustration, which is my plan here. Um, so I did sort of come up with a uh, subject matter that would allow me to not labor over it too long, 
uh, in the sense of a lot of this is going to be sky, like it's going to be a rainy day. It's going to a lot of it will be devoted to the sky. But I do want to get um, sort of like a mountain range in the background. So that's what I'm doing here. And this is maybe comes back to composition. Some of you saw my video um, a few uh, weeks ago about uh, composition and the purpose of putting in this uh, line of mountains in the background uh, kind of twofold. One of them would be uh, to create an added sense of distance. You know, you've got the foreground, you've got this distant background, but I think there's also a compositional aspect. This line is coming down here, sort of guiding our eyes toward her, maybe towards the uh, distance, you know, the road going away. To me, it just seems sort of natural. If I had the mountain come up to a peak right behind her, that would be kind of awkward to me, compositionally. They would, it would seem like they're sort of competing with one another. This way, uh, the, the, the mountain gets to have its place here, the umbrella gets its place here, and the uh, shrine gets its place over here. And by the way, I did sort of figure the the umbrella should be taller than the shrine, again, for compositional purposes. If these two were exactly the same height, uh, it's just going to be a little uh, awkward somehow, I think. Well, we're coming up. We're on 16 minutes now. Everyone's like, Mark, why do you keep checking the time? <laughs> Uh, just sort of, it allows me to make choices in terms of, okay, what do I do with these um, four, five, six remaining minutes? I'm not going to just cut it off immediately at um, the 20 minute mark, but I don't want to go too much past that. Anyway, uh, so we're going to have some foreground grass. That's going to be something that I'm going to um, probably in the penciling a little, you know, it's, I'm going to build my way towards there, but certainly by the time we get to the polishing stage, I'll be uh, getting some additional details into the grass uh, that comes here over this road. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I want to get some uh, puddles here in the road because these puddles are going to allow me to do reflections of her um, in the puddles, and that is going to add to the feeling of, uh, you know, the rainy day thing, right? So I'm going to just sort of loosely indicate this, but this will probably be done more with color later on in the process. But you can see how I'm going to have her, um, you know, her boots or whatever uh, reflected in these uh, puddles. And uh, I, got, I got two puddles kind of right next to each other, which is maybe a little odd compositionally. Uh, I'll move this one over here, and let's say maybe there's a um, a fourth smaller puddle over here. Now, when I do these sort of dirt roads, I'm also a big fan of dirt roads. This thing brings together all <laughs> kinds of little illustration things that I just love uh, to do. I lo I tend to put these little ruts in the road that look like either tire tracks or uh, bicycle tracks or something like that. Um, adds a little detail to the surface of the road, but it also uh, uh, conveys the perspective. And the last thing that I think this drawing needs, because it's looking very blank to me, is uh, some trees. So I am going to get a tree in here, and this all becomes very compositional, I think, the whole purpose of adding this tree. Uh, again, there's sort of uh, has the dual purpose of showing a little bit of depth, but I, I, for me, it's it's filling out the drawing. It's making it feel more complete. And um, let's say that the uh, we're not going to see a whole lot of the branches and stuff. Um, again, I'm trying. I, I know in my mind that the, I want this whole illustration to be done within an hour and 20 minutes. And Heck, we're almost down to an hour now, aren't we? Because <laughs> I've already devoted so much time to the pencil. So uh, I'm not going to get too much into the details of these trees. They're going to be kind of in the distance, uh, maybe a little misted out, uh, if I can pull that off. Uh, and they, yeah, they just become sort of a compositional thing. But maybe get another one here that's back behind them. She's sort of on a hillside, maybe... Um, the, the placement of these trees suggests that you know you go over the hill and it goes down back there and then you would see these trees more clearly top to bottom and I feel like I've kinda got most of what I want in here now one thing that I will sometimes do even in the pencil stage just sort of help myself see where I'm going with this thing is to add a little bit of shading now this is all gonna pretty much maybe get washed away a little 
um, when we get to the coloring stage next week. Um, but I sometimes I will do this just to help me sort of see things and say, okay, well, is this going to work as a composition? Um, because when it's completely blank uh, and has not been shaded in at all, I'm having trouble seeing the final illustration. And I'm always, you know, as an artist, I want to try to see early on some sense of what it's probably going to look like when I'm done. Where are the darks going to be? Where are the lights going to be? And so I'm adding in just a little bit of shading. Uh, it'll be interesting when I get to doing this female character. I, I see this as a very muted piece where there's not a whole lot of bright colors, but I may sort of come up with one or two colors. Maybe her coat is a certain color that uh, will uh, add a little bit of uh, interest to the illustration. And I suppose that if it's if the surface of this umbrella is very slick uh, from the rain, then we might get some, you know, reflective whiteness up here at the top. And I'm feeling pretty good about it now. I think we've got uh, uh, most of where we need to be. And look, it's 21 minutes, uh, all real time, all one take, huh? What do you think about that, people? Never even hit the pause button. So yeah, um, uh, let me know what you think about this video. Um, sadly, I'm committed to this, people. Even if you hate this video, even if this com the comment section is like, Mark, this was the boringest video you ever made, ever. Um, it's too late, people. I'm committed to it. I'm going to do these four videos. And uh, I fear that some people will check out over time and say, eh, I get the idea. But for those of you who are serious about um, illustration, learning illustration techniques, I do think it was worth doing this just one time, at least, this uh, real-time series of videos to give you an honest sense of uh, how much time this stuff takes. Um, and I have had over the years a lot of people complain in general about time lapse of like, please, at least once, do it without time lapse, do the whole thing without time lapse. And so that is what we're doing, and I hope those people will be pleased at the very least. Hope I don't lose all my subscribers over the course of the next four <laughs> uh, weeks. In any case, let's go ahead and uh, wrap up this penciling stage. Um, thank you so much uh, for watching this video. I'm going to go ahead and wind it down. You can see it's like you're saying you're going to wind it down, but you're not actually winding it down. It's so hard. It's so hard to stop drawing people. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Enough, enough. Let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.